This is a Wheel Horse Lawn Ranger, manufactured between 1969 and 1973. Join me as I attempt to get it working. Okay, so yeah, welcome everybody to a new Will It Run video. This one is going to be a challenge. I think the first thing to do is to clean off all this dirt and then we'll see if it's actually worth doing. Hopefully it is, but yeah, this has been outside for many years. This engine doesn't pull over. I need to work out if it's just the recoil that's seized, or if the coil is seized to the flywheel, or if it's internally seized. These ones have been metric. Also, this engine dates back to 1977, which is newer than the machine itself. I don't know the exact date of the machine, but as I said at the beginning, 69 to 73. This side does seem to be an imperial bolt. Yep, 7 sixteenths. Quite a difference between them. That's the original. The front ones are original too. No mice. That's something. So it's not the recoil. This is still seized. Ah, there we go. So yeah, it was seized to the coil, which is exactly the same problem as what the mount field had. So probably with a new pull cord and a new handle, this will be okay. Seems to work okay. I think that is just getting stuck on the deck. The deck spindles are, are probably all seized. And the recoil clutch does turn very slowly. And also <laughs> the cobweb in here. It's impressive. But yeah, I'll test the coil. Carburetor's gonna have to have proper clean. I've not looked in the fuel tank yet. You can see the water in the fuel, which is no surprise, but I'm amazed how clean the tank is, really. It's not too bad. what is left of the deck. Not much. Um, so, everything except for maybe that idler there, that pulley, is seized. Which is no surprise. It's been left outside for years.
That one might free off, but that one is seized. That one's pretty much seized. So, yeah, it's always hard to appreciate how rotten something is on camera. I'll see what I can do with it. It might be possible to free them off, but I don't know if it's worth it. I can see some patch up job here. Which I'm not even sure is made out of metal. Mm, might have been a very thin piece of sheet metal with powder coat on it. What I'm more interested in is seeing if it will now turn over. It does, kind of, but that could still be the the pulleys for the transmission belt. It certainly sounds to be coming from underneath rather than inside the crankcase. Also, you can see the bag being sucked in, um, which certainly would um, show that there is a piston moving up and down. Yeah, I'm confident that's going from underneath. It's freeing off anyway. But what I need to do before I turn it over anymore is actually look inside the bore with the endoscope, which is going to be a little bit difficult because there's not much space to get in, but I'm going to try my best. Put the endoscope in through the spark plug hole and we'll take a look inside here. I'm expecting quite a bit of water corrosion. It's moving the piston down, it's coming back up again. So I just don't want too much debris in here. I can see a scratch on the side of the bore there, and there is certainly water in there. Yeah, that's all water corrosion. I'm not 100% sure if they are actually deep scratches or if it's just dirty marks from where the piston has moved down the combustion chamber. But you can see there is quite a bit of carbon and other debris in here. I'm going to attempt to unpolt the engine and turn it around because I can't get the head off with it like this. There just isn't enough space. I've tilted the mower over and look at that, all the water pouring out of the seat. This integrated seat is like a sponge. So let's take a look under here. As you would expect, in fairly rough shape, but I would say it's better than that mound fill which I did. This is the front where the engine is. Of course somebody has actually been in here before because it's not the original engine so that has been, that pulley has been removed before. I don't necessarily need to remove the pulley. I'm hoping just to rotate the engine. Fairly perished belts but they can be replaced.
Before I unbolt the engine, I'm just going to check the coil, but I don't think it's going to be any good. It looks very similar to the one which was in the mount field. Even rustier. Um, the terminal on the end is rotted off. Hmm. <laughs> Some of it's in here. A rusty, mushy mess, and that's what's left of it. Should be enough exposed there. I think the coil is probably bad. So in that case, I'm gonna to to try and find another coil. Maybe a good use one, but I don't think I do have one for this engine. So in that case, I'm gonna to to try and find one. I'll probably just get an aftermarket one, see if that'll fit, and then if we get to the stage of needing a coil, then I'll fit it. But yeah, next I'm gonna unbolt the engine, turn it around so that we can have a look inside the head. And the carburetor is gonna be a problem because that is absolutely filthy in there. The belt is still connected underneath, but I'm hoping I can just turn it on the pulley. Also, the oil drain, because it's not the original engine, is in a really bad place just there opposite the engage rod. So I'm hoping I can drain it when I've rotated it. That is in a much better place. When I drain the oil, I put it into a glass container so you can actually see the condition of the oil. Uh, I think I'll also get another muffler, try and find a used one or an aftermarket. The car brush I'm hoping to use, but it is really bad. What I'm trying to avoid here is just replacing everything because that's not what I want to do. Um, so yeah, the plan is to fix up the carburetor. The coil I've already tested and that is bad, that's not gonna work. Obviously the muffler has had it, so that needs to be replaced. But everything else I'm hoping is gonna stay fairly original. I've just noticed the throttle is seized. So there's a bit of a homemade linkage set up here. Just look at that. This will be interesting. <laughs> ah. And that is why I've removed the head. It's not really a surprise that uh, water has been getting into here. I wonder if that valve is stuck. Yep. But I'm confident that this is going to be good enough to run. Um, even if it does mean finding a, another good use valve. But that one might be usable. It was inevitable really. When I saw that tube, it was just because that leads straight onto that valve. It's the intake. It was just. It had to be like that. It had to be in bad condition. I am amazed how well the exhaust valve moves. Seems okay. I don't want to keep turning it over though. I need to clean those out and try and free the valve.
I think this will be easier on the bench. Well, amazingly, that oil doesn't look too bad at all. Let's have a look under this valve cover. Yeah, there's a bit of water in there, but it's not too bad. Clearly the oil which was left has prevented it from corroding. Okay, so very carefully I'm going to hit it down with a nylon hammer. I know you can't really be very careful with a hammer, but there's not really many options here. The valve actually has now freed off enough to return on its own with the spring but that's not really good enough. I, I would prefer to clean it up as well. So I'm just attempting to remove it. And there it is. You can see the difference between where it was exposed to the water coming in through the intake and where it was actually in the valve guide. Now if this was being rebuilt, if I was rebuilding this engine, I would replace that valve. But since the purpose of this video is just to see if it will run with the original parts except for ones which have to be replaced such as the coil because there's just no way of it working. Um, yeah, we're going to keep this one in the engine, I'll clean it up and then reinstall it. Well that's the intake port much cleaner than it was before. The exhaust port is not great but it's also not terrible so I think since it is at this stage I will remove that valve as well and clean it all up just to make the job thorough and then it'll be time just to, um, to sandblast the pipe, this pipe here, and uh, reinstall it, clean a few other things up and then we'll move on to the carburetor.
I'm just in the process of lapping in the valves. As you know, the intake valve really is not good. But I'm fairly confident that I will be able to create some kind of seal. So if I just clean off this valve grinding paste, I'll show you what it's looking like so far. It's also very important not to get the valve grinding paste on the stem, and if you do, if you do get it on the stem, it has to be cleaned thoroughly. Yeah, so as I've already said, the uh, the valve should be replaced, but I'm just trying to see if we can get the engine running with what we've got. And I think it will be fine. I will actually be uh, fully rebuilding one of these engines in the future. Probably this winter, actually. I'm going to do the same thing to the exhaust valve, but actually it's not too bad. It is quite good. Now what you'll probably find is these suction tools won't really work that well on a valve such as this pitted one here. It doesn't really stick to it. It can't create the suction. Um, but if you just add a bit of clean water to the end of it, not too much, just dampen it, it will stick better than it would do without. Um, but this nice clean valve here, it works very effectively on. There are a few pitted bits just here, so it needs to keep going and eventually it will create a really good seal. Make sure they're nice and clean, especially the valve stems. And that's the valve installed. Interestingly, according to the parts manual, this engine has two exhaust springs rather than an intake and an exhaust spring. And also, I'm going to check the, uh, the valve clearances. The intake valve wants to be between 5 and 7 thou. So that is the exhaust valve fully open, meaning I can check the intake. This is 8 thou. So with a bit of luck, it won't fit. It doesn't. Uh, so I'm going to go down to 7. Just about fitting, looks like it's probably going to be six. Six thou, okay, good. The exhaust valve wants to be between nine and eleven thou. So we'll fully shut the exhaust and fully open the intake. And I think we'll start with ten. Seems good. It usually is best just to start in the middle and uh, work from there. The intake valve, which was stuck, is now moving very freely in and out. So that is the valve work completed. 
the next thing to do is to uh, to work on the head. That really is some impressive corrosion. It's like uh, when you get rust worm under paintwork. It's just worming its way in. I'm just going to put it through my sandblaster. It's very rusty on the inside of this pipe, and of course, the head itself is uh, full of oxidation, aluminium oxide. I'm not too worried about the exterior, just need to, uh, to blow all this debris off with the airline. That came out quite well. These darker areas are the areas where it was heavily corroded. As for the intake tube, not too bad overall, but there are a couple of pinholes just here. Uh, they probably won't cause too much of an issue, but I will JB weld them up. Okay, so I'm now going to fit the head, and the three bolts in the bottom right hand corner are the longer three. I think they were probably in the wrong place before. I do have a chart here, which not only shows you where the longer bolts go, it's this, this head here, um, it's also a chart to show you the, uh, the pattern, the tightening pattern, when you come to torque the, the head bolts. That is the order which you would uh, you tighten them in. So fairly simple stuff really. The head gasket which came off it, I'm going to reuse. They're just all loosely done up. So 140 inch pounds is the torque setting for this engine. And this is the first head bolt that needs to be torqued. Number two. And then obviously just continue tightening as the diagram suggests. And then at the end I like to go around everything in a clockwise pattern just to make sure everything is at the correct torque. And there we go, that is the head done. So now I can move on to everything up here. I'm going to take the coil off, going to take the flywheel off and probably replace the pointer condenser. Just depends how bad they are, but I, I doubt they're any good. That's seen better days. Can be rotated though, put two new holes in. Ordinarily, I would use a flywheel puller to remove the flywheel, but as you can see, there's no pre-drilled and tapped holes on here, so I'm just going to use a long screwdriver 
and a copper mallet. This is the part number of the new kit, 294628, and included in that kit is everything you need, including this little spring compressor, so you can remove the wires from uh, the existing condenser, and of course refit them to the new one. So it just fits over the top, you can then push down, and it will release the wires. Yeah, it's very corroded. And dispose of these because you get all this in the new kit. Okay, so here are all the new parts, including the new condenser. Let's get them fitted. Moving on to the carburetor and fuel tank assembly. This is pretty bad, as you'd expect. As bad as the rest of it. But the difference is, this is obviously uh, the most delicate part, so... Yeah, I don't know how this is going to go. Firstly, I'm going to remove the carburetor from the tank, and then I can start to clean this up and see how bad it actually is. Okay, let's see how bad it is in here. There will be two pickup tubes. Not sure what that is. Possibly a bit of paper. 
but yeah, really, really dirty screen. And it, as for the sort of float bowl equivalent, that is totally rusted up. It's orange with rust. So yeah, it looks bad, but I'm quite hopeful. The reason why is because this is actually made out of aluminium and what we see in here is rust, iron oxide. So that must have come from the intake tube. So maybe the car brush itself isn't that bad at all. Maybe it just needs to have a really good clean. So what I'm gonna do is, well, just probably blow it through with the airline, put a bit of carb spray through and then put it into the ultrasonic cleaner for few years might do it. No, uh, probably about 40 minutes, 30 minutes. Yeah, it's not, it's not clean in there, but it's not horrendous. I'm confident it's going to be okay. There's a bit more corrosion in there. Need to make sure all the passages are clear. But that's what the ultrasonic cleaner is for. And also a bit of carb spray at the end. And I'll blow it through with the airline. Let's just see if I can remove this gasket. I do have a new gasket, so it doesn't matter about breaking it. We also have the fuel pump, and again I will be changing the diaphragm under here. It does sometimes get stuck. Oh nice. I think that's the worst part yet. Of course, it's the spring. Steel spring. Yeah, that's gonna need to be replaced. But it's still cleanable. Right, so let's put it into the ultrasonic cleaner and see what that can do. I think it's mostly just gonna loosen the dirt. The majority of the actual cleaning will be with the car breast cleaner. Just lay this old conrod in. Has a few of the delicate parts on it. And we have the main carburetor. That's half an hour. Let's see what it looks like. Hopefully it's loosened up. Yeah, you can see a lot of uh, floating rust. Yeah, it's really loosened the rust up. Everything's just peeling off. So yeah, I'm gonna go with the carb spray and hopefully that's just gonna take all of that loose dirt off. This paint, which is not original, is just flaking off.
Well, that's as clean as I can get it without using any kind of rust treatment. So I do have just a very small amount of rust converter, which I'm very carefully going to apply. But what I don't want to do is damage the aluminium. So if it can just eat away at that top layer, I can then wash it off and hopefully no damage will be done to anything else. The same will have to be done in there. So I'll just give that 10 minutes. Okay, just going to try and assist it with a nylon brush. After a quick wash, that is what it looks like, and I'm quite impressed. It's not perfect, but it's such an improvement. So what do I do about this? Probably the same thing, but I do need to be very careful. Again, that has worked quite well. There is still some rust in there, but it's a, it's a big improvement. Just want to say though, I don't recommend putting rust conversion, rust treatment in your carburetor. It's just because this is so bad and uh, the idea behind this project is to see if I can get it running. I've also put some rust converter in the bowl, in the top of the fuel tank. As I wait for the rust treatment to work in the fuel tank, I'm going to start to reassemble the carburetor. That is tightened all the way in finger tight. I'm now going to do one and a half turns out and that is my starting point for getting the right mixture. Sometimes that's enough, sometimes you don't have to adjust it again. Okay so now for the fuel pump on this side we have the new parts here for the fuel pump. This is the spring and this is the spring cap and there to replace the, uh, the interesting contraption that the old one turned into and that is the new diaphragm. Part number 692206 is the spring and 690766 is the spring cap. Back to the fuel tank and the rust treatment did do quite a good job, it's quite difficult to see. There is some residue, but the majority of the rust is out of there, so I'm just going to blow it out of the airline. That's just going to have to do I think. It looks better in real life than it does on the camera. The gasket to mount the carburetor to the fuel tank is 270073. Okay, moving on, we have the starter recoil clutch, and it just feels like it's really gummed up or something, it barely turns. It should turn freely, so let's remove these small bolts to begin with, and then hopefully I can split it open. Yeah, it's, it's just full of rust, lots of dirt, it should be nice and clean in here, with the, uh, the six ball bearings. But that is still barely turning in the seal. I think it yeah, it's just it's just filthy. 
really dirty. So it's going to be a simple one, just a good clean up and I'll put it back together. Time to refit the fuel tank and I now have the genuine replacement linkages instead of this homemade system. Uh, it might have worked, I don't know. That's original, but broken. getting there so I just need to find a new cap for the fuel tank. I also need to put this terminal on the end of the HT lead and also I need to set the air gap for the uh, the coil. I've got some new old, very old stock. Uh, it's even started to corrode in its packets but yeah it, it'll be fine. Now the terminal I'm going to put on the end of here is actually a genuine one. This is a, an aftermarket coil, uh, but this is part number 493880S. Uh, the reason why I'm fitting it is because the one that came with it was horrific. It, it was awful. I do usually buy genuine only. I didn't want to spend too much on this machine, but that's what I find quite a lot of the time. If you don't, if you don't buy genuine, you, you usually do get issues. Not always. There are some good aftermarket brands, but I just like to buy genuine. And now I'm going to put the original spark plug boot on it. Hopefully it's going to fit. Should do. And then we should find a new spark plug. One more thing I need to do is change the pull cord on this. The pull handle to be more specific, but I think I probably will just change everything. Uh, it, it does not look pretty one, one bit, but it does seem to work. But yeah, the pull cord is looking a bit frayed and very old, so I'll just change it with the handle. These are the new parts. The grip is part number 691915. And here is uh, the pull cord, which I've just taken off a, a whole spool of lawnmower pull cord. I have made the new length slightly longer since it is a small diameter. If I was to let go of it, I would lose it. So it's just going to give more travel when it comes to pulling the engine over, which should make it easier. Thank you. 
That should pull through so the knot just gets tucked inside, makes it nice and neat. And that is a new pull cord. The only thing I don't have is an air filter. It took the the rectangular type air box. The 35 Classic has a more triangular style, but it might fit. And there we go, just going to get an air filter for it, 